official start of the festivities at the convention center. Joining us now with our state of San Diego is political analyst John Data. And John, good to have you on the program there, my man. Good morning, Chris. So minimum wage, this is uh, continuing to make uh, a number of headlines here, as it sounds like there's a debate as to whether or not those that oppose minimum wage want to press forward with a referendum. Uh, explain to me what that referendum does and how that uh, how that would work, John. Well, there's a process that if when the city council, who's your elected representatives, if they pass something, and we saw this recently with the Barrio Logan issue, if they pass something uh, that uh, uh, many people in the community uh, disagree with, they can go to the actual, you know, straight democracy, go to the polls, put it on the ballot. Now, there's a very complicated formula, and one of the problems is there's a short time limit about what they got, have to gather quite a few signatures. They were able to do that on the Barrio Logan issue. One point you've heard me repeat time and time again when it comes to any type of initiatives, and that is, does the, does the side have resources? Sources because it's a little expensive because you have to get signature gathers to get that in a very short time frame. So that's what that's what we're going through right now. Um, the first thing is we're, we're waiting to see if the mayor, mayor vetoes uh, this recent vote. But the problem is. Uh, there's six uh, Democrats on the council who voted for this, and that's the exact same number needed for a veto. It's what we call a supermajority. So, John, if if this comes to a referendum, is this going to be an opportunity on a ballot for the people to decide whether or not they want to raise the minimum wage in San Diego to 1150? Or is this an opportunity for the people of San Diego to decide whether or not uh, the law is legal and then send it back to square one? Well, is it, what would happen is what, what the council voted, uh, the, the council actually voted on a, a several, a several steps that it would raise uh, at several different levels over the next couple of years. So if the referendum passed, uh, it, it would wipe that out and it would send it back to council. Again, there's a, there's a procedure in the uh, legislation that says, you know, how soon that they can address the issue again and, uh, and that prevents them from just, you know, revoting and that type of thing. But yes, that would wipe out this recent council vote and send it back to the legislature exactly as the Barrio Logan vote. So let's just suppose that the, the opposition wants to run this referendum and let's suppose that they run a referendum and as we found out, 60% of San Diegans, this is according to the latest poll, uh, they, they think that raising it without the vote is a bad idea. So let's just say the referendum passes. This goes back to square one. Is there anything to stop uh, Todd Gloria from coming back and saying, okay, we will put something on the ballot, but I want it to be my $13.09 proposal I had initially. Is there anything that would stop that from happening? I, I don't believe so, because uh, okay. again, the referendum would specifically address the council vote. Um, uh, so, so that is that's a, another big issue. But I'll be honest with you, Chris, you got to put it in context of the way you just put the scenario. If the referendum you know, passes and it goes back to council, I think both sides are going to be very tired politically. I think both sides will be very tired financially. And I don't I don't know if I, I would see that happening. Let me specifically jump to the numbers that you quoted. No matter what the number is that people uh, think it should have gone to a vote, if they qualify for a referendum, look at those numbers that you quoted as far as who supports the minimum wage and who doesn't. It's basically split. So I see this, quite honestly, as, you know, campaigning 101 that either side could win and either side could lose and so what it would boil down to is who runs the best campaign and who has the best resources it would be tough for the opposition because they would have to win the referendum to start with and then the opposition would have to go and and then win the following um uh ballot proposal i suppose as well right so that would uh, kind of double duties as far as how much it would cost them that's right. That's again. I keep using Barrio Logan an example. So that's exactly right. You got to get it. You got to uh, get the signatures in the uh, certain allotted time first, and then you have to uh, run a campaign. And as we saw the uh, the Barrio Logan, uh, which is basically roughly, you know, with a few exceptions, the same type of supporters uh, and opponents that would be on this side, uh, the the ones who were against the Barrio Logan plan, uh, ran a very good campaign, and they they use their resources smartly. It's not only having resources; it's using them smartly and they did that john i know it's an issue that is uh, near and dear to your heart and that is this death penalty the judge last week uh, in orange county said that the death penalty uh, as it's being executed right now no pun intended uh, in california is unconstitutional basically he said it's uh, life in prison with a chance of execution um 
so what is next now as far as California goes? This is going to this is going to end up in appeals, right? The next step is to go to to the appeals court. Well, uh, I'm assuming, um, which I very rarely use that word, uh, but the direct answer to your question is uh, it was a federal judge ruling, but it was about the state of California. So it's up to our current state attorney general, Kamala Harris, to decide whether or not to appeal. Now, keep in mind, to put the political spin on it, she's getting ready to run for governor in four years. So how does that affect the decision? I'm not sure. So that that is the next step, whether or not the state as an entity appeals it. Now, also, here's another little interesting twist, and that is the fact that because this was a federal judge that ruled on this, even though if it would, would be appealed, it would go to the Ninth Circuit, which is the area where we live in. There are other states across the country. Pennsylvania, for example, is very similar to California that has quite a few people on death row for quite a long time. So because this was a federal judge ruling, other states might try to use this as a precedent. So this, this has huge implications, not only for the state of California, but a Across the country. All right. We may be referring to this case for years and years to come, huh, John? Oh, and, uh, ab- absolutely. Um, and, and as you know, I've got to go um, in uh, two days to a parole hearing uh, for a murderer. And um, although that's not a death penalty case, it could have and should have been. So uh, a, a lot of uh, DAs are looking at this ruling, to try, trying to decide whether or not to press a uh, uh, first degree murder cases in the future. Very interesting. John Dady and from Dating Associates. John, always a pleasure and good luck this week. I know it's uh, it's weighing heavy on your heart there, my friend. Thank you, Chris. All right. Uh, State of San Diego with John Dady and Dating Associates every Monday here at 620 on News Radio 600 Kogo. Where are the bodies in Ukraine?